All right, here we have the um, Briggs and Stratton. What is it? Three, two, six, four, three, seven. It's an eighteen horsepower, like four-stroke engine. Um, it's for a wood chipper that I bought, and uh, I bought it. It was running. It promptly died not long after. Uh, probably sustained damage when the guy started it up after several years and probably didn't check the oil because it had pretty low oil and that probably pretty much did it in so when I had filled up the oil and went to go use it it died in about 10 minutes but it worked gloriously before that 10 minutes was up um, so now I'm gonna you know attempt to rebuild this I guess I'll make a series on it I'm hoping to. I, I need, I, I've always intended to do more for YouTube, but, you know, we bought a Fixer Upper, and I intended to, like, you know, show everyone my drywall and learning experience, and I didn't do any of it because I just found out we were we were pregnant right, right when we moved. Had to get that done. I'm hoping to get back into it now that the house is kind of calming down. And now I've got twins on the way, apparently, so we'll see, but there's not a lot of videos about, you know, amateurs doing this stuff, so... Seems like a good thing to do and a good way to get going. Uh, start getting some views or something because we want to start doing like a little mini farm and you know get that all going. Um, speaking of which, you know, I have a, slowly acquired a bunch of stuff for almost nothing on Facebook Marketplace. Got this hoop house for like a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I got this blower for like 150, I think. Then it stopped snowing, you know, because of like El Nino's. But the sprayer, I got this. Tiller, which is glorious. I mean, I've never seen a tiller like this, really, but it works so much better than any tiller I ever used. Got my, my little tiny wood chipper, which is totally inadequate. My secondary mower to make long cutting quicker. I have this chipper shredder over here for all the vines. Got a little mower back there I'm going to convert into a brush mower because of all the vines. So I've acquired a lot of equipment. Um, I'm hoping to start doing some before and after stuff of you know the process that i've attempted to do and stuff like that um but yep first one that definitely needs to be done is this get this promark uh, model 210 working again uh and the motor is the first uh first step because we have a lot of bush honeysuckle mulberry bushes and black willow on this three acres and it is whoa, very, um, very, very quick growing and <laughs> out to just ruin my day. So, like I said, I've never done this before, but everyone says this is the best kind of motor to learn it on. So, we'll be doing that. Anyway, I hope, uh, hope everyone, you know, stays tuned. Hoping to do some more things here. Forgot to even talk about what I've done so far. Um, I un took off the oil pan, which is four bolts at the bottom, above the four bolts that mount it. It's got a pretty deep oil pan, which is nice. Um, and then, you know, I found lots of uh, parts down in there, um, <clears throat> which the most of them are still in there, but. You know, it looks like the governor in there got a, like one of its teeth chipped. It looks like it might still work, but I might find out how to replace that. Um, popped off the top, and the piston was stuck here at the top. Looks like there is, it feels like there's a little bit of something right here. But, I mean, like, my nail doesn't even catch on it, so I'm hoping, like, a quick honing will do the job. Um, there wasn't a lot of noise or anything because this motor is so deep. Like the oil pan is just so in there um, that I think everything fell to the bottom without much damage. I got a pooler coming for this. Um, get the flywheel off of there. Uh, then I can hopefully get the crank out. This motor is weird in that, like... The entire back doesn't come off, just a plate for the 
You know, most of the videos I see of something like this, this whole back plate comes off. But this one's just enough to get the crank out. Um, I'll probably take these valves out and replace them. I gotta buy a rebuild kit, but putting to you know get that going. Speaking of little oil, the manual I see mentions this one, but does not mention this other one back here. And this is the one where the dipstick's supposed to be, but and then the head has the mounting hole for the dipstick. It, it goes in there and hangs off of this. But it's clearly been removed, so I don't think anyone was ever accurately filling the oil on this thing. Um, it's a 40-year-old engine. It's a uh, the date code's like 80, like like what May of 84, I think. So pretty impressive that's run most of its life probably on this chipper with bad oil levels. Um, I think it holds. Two liters, and there was nowhere near two liters in there. Uh, like I said, when I went to go get it and the guy ran it, that's probably what did it in. I kind of wished he uh, just started it and turned it off, but he wanted to rev it up and show how cool it was. And then I, like an idiot, came home and used it for a tree branch or two, and that's when it turned off. I had filled it up at that point, though, but... Too late, too late. All these pieces, all these chunks. Hopefully this isn't just a giant paperweight. We'll see, we'll see. We'll know soon. <laughs> anyway, for real this time, take care, and hope to hear and uh, get more content up here soon. Bye.